Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Mario & Luigi Partners in Time. In the last episode, we got to Toad Town after getting rejected from the Shrew Motherboard, Mothership, Mother 3 confirmed sort of thing Mahuzi. And we unfortunately discovered that the Princess Peach that we had with us this whole time was actually Princess Shroop in disguise, who was scoping out the future Munchroom Kingdom in an attempt to take it over as well. Because having one timeline to herself wasn't good enough for her, apparently. In this episode, we are going to try and return to the Mushroom Kingdom of our time, just so we could get uh, situated once again and decide what our next plan is going to be. Now that I think about it, how many Cobalt Star Shards do we even have? Uh, we have three of them, so I'm saying uh, three more, so we're like about, not halfway done with the game, we're more than halfway done, but uh, just sort of giving you an idea of how much further we need to go before we could get things all situated. Uh, let's just jump back over here. If we can, stop getting stuck on little mushrooms. And then hop down here. We got green shells. A lot of stinking items in this place, that's for sure. Get that. Dire Pow Badge. That is a badge that does a thing. I'm the best commentator ever. Uh, Dire Pow Badge. Do tre tremendous damage when you have less than a quarter of your HP. Don't really want to use that. Uh, can't escape through this way, so we just gotta jump back up and around. Now, as I said in the last episode, uh, this main area is going to have you separated from the babies for extended periods of time. Basically, you're gonna be working together uh, from one different side. So the big bro's gonna be on the left and the baby's gonna be on the right. And you just gotta work together to uh, continue progress for each other. As you will see as we progress right now. I'm just gonna hop on out of here and jumpity jumpity jump. Jump, jump, jumpity jump. Okay, head over here. And time to get things started. Got any items down here? Uh, we already got those off camera or last episode, either or. And we see a new enemy. So let's see if I can do the. Not that, but whatever. We got a Skelepoki. A Skeloki, rather. Very funny name. Just gonna hit it in the head. Thankfully, it doesn't have any uh, body parts uh, at this point in time, so we can just keep on hitting it, no problem. And our speed is just way too crazy high for him to even do anything. I assume it's just like a regular Pokey, but more powerful. I guess we could just stick with the babies for now until we need to switch over to the big bros for progress, or uh, in case anything else like that happens. So like that we could just dig right under. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. See if we can paralyze this guy like I was trying to do. There we go. And... Or not. There you go. Or no, he hit us, rather. And I did not mean to do that. At least it always just does one damage. And he creates a body. Oh no! Okay, he's not entirely similar to the regular Pokey. He shoots fire from his mouth. That's pretty different. Let's use a red shell. Actually, let's just use a green shell. Because I want to get rid of those segments first. And now we start doing damage. Like Baby Luigi's always doing the monkey. The Baby Mario's always like, let me at him, let me at him. And there you go, that's all we needed. Oh, uh, we got ourselves another new enemy right here. This guy is pretty awkward. He's a love bubble. Very, very lovely. I believe they could heal themselves and other allies that they're with, but as for attacking, uh, they're actually pretty wonky with their attacks. You just gotta, like, be able to hit them whenever they're floating around. If you keep on messing up over and over again, then they'll eventually just hit you. So you just gotta be careful and hit at the right time. You get a smash egg. Very, very nice. Uh, speaking of the smash egg, the smash egg has a very, very, very small chance of dropping a simple badge. Uh, or having a simple badge hatch out of it whenever you use it. So, if you got one of those before playing the Thwomp minigame, then I feel really sorry for you, because that was a very big waste of time for you, I guess. Unless you just really like the simple badge, you want to have multiple copies of it. Uh, let's see. What we do is use a shell. Let's see how much more damage we're going to do. Uh, is it the same amount of damage? No, I think we're doing a bit more. I think it was like 7 and 8 before, wasn't it? I don't know. There we go. And I like the little sound effect. Okay. 
Uh, nothing else for us in this map. Uh, I'm gonna try and remember, not gonna fight every single enemy along the way. Uh, this area right here, uh, we're gonna need to get the big bros over here now, so, time to switcheroo. It's so weird having them separated and stuff. This will be a good time, I guess, for the babies to not have that, the badges that make it so they're super vulnerable, because I actually do care about their defense right now, but, I don't know, I'm still good at dodging stuff, so I think it's okay. Hit it with that, and that, and that, and that. And both of them become accessible. I would anticipate that there will be more impedimentals like this on the road ahead. Perhaps it's best to proceed separately from the juveniles for the time being. I would be remiss if I did not add the Cobalt, Cobalt Star is behaving rather peculiarly. We'll just let it lose, because that's always safe. According to my analysis, the data indicates the Cobalt Star's activity is somehow related to Star Hill. My sensors indicate a pathway to Star Hill somewhere in the village, but... I am perplexed by the signals that Cobalt Star is transmitting. I have no hypothesizer. Let us away to Star Hill. The answers must be... must await us there. Back to adventure! So we have references to both Paper Mario and Super Mario RPG. We have Toad Town from the, uh, the Paper Mario games and then Star Hill. The land of Geno at long last! I know it's like very confusing to keep up with all the different star terms. because has got Star Hill, Star Road, Star Way, Star Path, Star Street, Star Avenue, Star Boulevard. It's really stinking confusing. But no, Star Hill is where Geno is from. Does that mean we're going to actually see him now? Unfortunately not. The only time we ever saw Geno after Mario RPG was in a little mini game in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. Where you see a Geno puppet being controlled by someone during a mini game of sorts. That's the only time we've ever seen him. And you see, like, in the credits of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga that, um, they had to give specific credit for use of the Geno character just for that one little minigame to Square Enix because they own the character, which is really sick and unfortunate. And what's even more unfortunate is in the remake of Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, like, Bowser's Minions, that one for the 3DS, they actually got rid of the Geno cameo, which is really stinking lame. Uh, just jump with Luigi, jump with Luigi, jump with Luigi, jump with the- Oh, you're tricking me out, tricking me out, jump with the Luigi, jump with the Mario, okay. But yeah, it's really sick and lame, I don't know why uh, they did it like that, but we got to see Gino, you know, just a quick glimpse of him again, but he got taken out, unfortunately. We did get to see a costume of him in Smash 4, though, uh, but then we have never seen him again since then. I really do hope that he gets into added to Smash Brothers. I was thinking about it for a while, like, I'm not really sure why I'm on the hype train for Gino, or why so many people want specifically him. Like, Mario RPG is a phenomenal game, but like, why, what is it about Gino that people want? And then somebody mentioned that, I don't remember who it was, but someone made the point that there is no character in Mar in Smash Bros. that represents the Mario RPGs. And I was talking about that before, how the Mario RPGs are so vast, you don't just say, it's not just a singular spin-off thing. There's the Mario and Luigi ones, which are very specific and uh, stand out as their own sort of thing. Then the Paper Mario ones are completely different with their art styles and their storytelling and everything like that, and definitely the gameplay. And then there's Super Mario RPG, the one that started it all, which is still to this day one of the best games ever made. So... I very much would love to see Mario RPG representation. I think it would be a lot more different than having uh, core Mario characters. As I know a lot of people aren't jazzed about how many Mario characters there are on Smash, but considering it's Nintendo's head honcho property, I think it's like very obvious that's going to happen. I'm pretty yeah. Prana was the only. Oh no, there was also Daisy. So Prana and Daisy were the only uh, new Mario characters added into Smash this time around. But in terms of Mario RPGs, like it's just such a different category, even though they originate from Mario games, like it's just such a different beast entirely. I'd love to see Gino and Mallow in Smash. I'd love to see Vivan in Smash or any of the other uh, party members from Paper Mario. And just like the unique art style of it all would be really cool. I doubt it'll ever happen, but the Paper Mario characters I kind of doubt would ever happen, but Gino, considering how much of a fan outcry it's been to get him into the game, I feel like it might be on the way. I have no idea really. Okay, jump on this dude, and we're good. Ultra drop, and Mario gets a level up. Very, very nice. Uh, what do we got here? We got good, good HP, good looking attack. Uh, speed is looking really good. Mario has really good speed as it is, though, doesn't he? Let's go with HP. Plus three, okay. And Luigi, go to level 23. 
Oh, he just grazed over the 69. Uh, defense is looking really good, but Luigi doesn't really need defense. Let's go with Stash. Plus four, okay. Uh, now that's taken care of. I think after you clear this through this place the first time, you could uh, come back through here again with both bait with all characters together. So those uh, items, the high shelves, I guess you could call it, uh, you can get them once you have uh, everyone reunited. But for now, we can't get them. Uh, this is a bit awkward. I don't know if we've seen this before. Of, I know I talked about the fact that uh, characters would have to carry each other if you run out of characters or something like that, so this is the delayed jump of Luigi, and he wasn't able to keep up with the rope, the Shroid's demand, so he uh, wasn't able to do that. Let's go ahead and revive Mario, because we need him. Okay, I'm going to try to remember not to fight every enemy on the way. I'll actually even actively avoid them. That sounds great, doesn't it? Uh, to the left, we got something for us, possibly. Let's see, it's a good old dead end, uh, but we need the babies to access most of these things. God darn it. If there's nothing over here that we could access right now, that'd be kind of crummy. Uh, thankfully that isn't the case. We could go ahead and reach this thing. It is, uh, thing we need with Mark. Paraslax. I wonder what that is. Paraslax. It's a pair of slacks. No. Light slacks with paratrooper wings that give a tremendous speed boost. Uh, lowers offense for Mario, but for Luigi, it also lowers offense. Not as much, though, but... Eh, I don't really want the speed boost. Increases defense as well, which is pretty nice, but I don't really care. If it were Mario who got increased defense, then I'd go for it, but... Nah. And I wound up fighting everyone on the screen anyway, because I just kept on running into them. So it's not entirely my fault that I've been fighting every enemy along the way, it's just that those are so stinging hard to avoid. And once I'm in the battle with them, there's no real point in not fighting them, because... I don't know, might as well fight them to get the experience, not the difficult battles, so just go for it. Uh, go over here and get yourself, uh, smash eggs. Okay, cool. So we were able to get these after all. Uh, not get hit by that guy. Oh, jeez, there's one more item up there. Let's go back around, avoid singing the song, especially because I'm sick right now and I can't sing. Like, I could actually sing when I'm not sick. I'll at least keep on telling myself that I can, because it makes me feel better about life. Like, I'm actually going places. Uh, coins. Okay, very, 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 very nice. Go over here. And we made it to the end point for the big bros. Switch over to the little bros. And looks like their pathway is rather short. Uh, go down here. Uh, we got any items for us? Yes, indeed. Got a bunch of coins. And more coins and an ultra drop. A lot of singing items in this place, though. It is Toad Town, so I guess it's to be expected. Uh, just gonna avoid this guy, Salt Snake style. I'm sure that happened to Salt Snake as well, some point throughout his life. Over here, we got ourselves three red shells. Uh, any more items? God darn it! Baby Mario got a level up while I was derping around, and we are going to be upgrading his. Huh. That was about attack. I feel like we always do attack with him, but whatever. Maybe Luigi goes to level 23 as well. And for him, we're going to be upgrading... Uh, speed looks really sick and nice. Oh my god, Stash looks really good. Let's go with Stash. Plus six. Very good. Head on in here. And thankfully, their pathway seems to be a lot shorter. Or, nah, we're still not done with this place. Oh, Jesus! I, tr I swear I'm trying to avoid enemies, but no, they just want to keep on attacking. Where the fruit even was I? I'm like a big, in a complete loss. Like, I have no recollection of what I was even talking about in this episode. If I even accomplished any sort of coherent thought in this episode. Or if it has just been a complete zen moment for the past 20 minutes and, like, nothing has actually happened. I honestly have no idea. I don't know if it's just because I'm sick or because... This sort of this LP has been sort of an experiment, because, like, with Paper Mario, I feel like there's no shortage of things for me to talk about. But, like, with this game, I just... I don't know what it is. I, I'm having fun with it, but I just find it really increasingly difficult to talk about stuff. So, kind of makes me feel more secure in my decision to not LP uh, Superstar Saga. But I'm starting to question whether or not I'll LP other Mario and Luigi games I had planned to LP later on in the future. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. Go down here. And pick up these guys. And finally we're reunited. 
Uh, what does it say? Uh, Star Hill visitors enter the lower left blue pipe, Star Hill Tourism Bureau. So, Star Hill is right here. We don't actually have to go back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Very cool, I suppose, but... Do we actually want to go there right now? Am I ready? Am I emotionally prepared to see Gino? Whether I'm ready or not, I cannot wait any longer! Let's go see him! We seem to have arrived on Star Hill. The Cobalt Star continues to become very agitate- agitified. Whoa! Danger! Alert! Danger! The Cobalt Star has become so disturbed that I am rapidly losing control of it! We must summit this hill with the greatest of speed! The source of the Cobalt Star's irritation must be somewhere in the immediate vicinity! Oh my god, I have been long for the day we would be reunited in Star Hill! It's so wonderful, just as I remember it, except not in the slightest, because I had a really cool art style back in that area. Oh, not that this game doesn't have a cool art style, but still, it, it looks really singing pretty, that's for sure, but... Oh my god, I love Star Hill so singing much. I love the music here, love the throwback to an old area. It's really cool. Go ahead and use these mushroom drops, and I think we're good. So, now let's sing Carol, let's head on up here. I don't know if there are any enemies. Yes, there are. Really weird enemies, just like in Star Hill from the first game. Or from Mario RPG. We got really weird enemies. Hand fake. They pretend to be enemies. This one's gonna pretend to be Bowser and throw a fireball, a fake fireball at you, which is really sick funny. They can also pretend to be Goombas and just try and uh, dash into you. It's really sick and weird. Just keep on making our way up here. Uh, we still have these hickeys. Uh, so for more hand fakes, that's why I went ahead and fought them. Uh, perhaps this will be a good time to show off the mixed flowers, since I haven't shown off yet. Quickly press the A button, uh, or press any button with the bro attached to it with the, to create a big fireball. It works on floating enemies, as you can see, because we are not throwing fireballs at them, we're throwing them into the sky! And creating a bigger and bigger and bigger fireball. Uh, let's do that, and... We are good. 375, my god. So it's really sick and powerful, really sick and quick, so it is a really good attack. It's just that, I don't know, the mix, the mixed flower, the double flower, or whatever it's called, the bounce flower, it's a lot more fun to play with, so I kind of prefer using that one over the, over the mixed flower, but it's certainly not a bad thing to just be crazy overpowered. Now let's see, let's see if we can get more attacks in on this guy. First, let's see more of his attacks, it's really sick and funny. Uh, he can turn to a ba-bomb. And the picture actually does explode, which is really funny. Uh, what's he got for us now? He has... Bowser again. Just throws the fireball. Like, it's a boo up there. Just jump on him again. I like how the picture even squints. It's a really funny and creative enemy. Uh, Goomba, what do you got? He just throws the sign. And yeah, this, oh, that's the majority of his attacks. I don't think he has any other ones. Oh, he has a paratrooper. Uh, unfortunately, I'm about to get rid of it, though. Uh, I assume the paratrooper one is just gonna, like, float in the air, like, and throw it high up or something like that. Uh, speaking of throwing high up... Oh, god darn it. Go ahead and revive Mario. Part of me kind of wants to get those super powerful pants off of him, just because I'm tired of having to revive him all the second time. Oh, yeah. Just do that. And Bowser again, my boy Bowser. I jump on the fireball because it's made of paper. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I guess in Paper Mario, you won't be able to jump on the paper fire. Uh, I was actually uh, watching a video talking about SpongeBob, uh, the Christmas special, and it was, it was kind of funny how they mentioned that he doesn't know who Santa Claus is because he lives underwater, yet he knows what fire is when he sees it, when he thinks he sees it in Sandy's house. That was kind of funny, but whatever. I don't know what to say they haven't said already. Like, I'm sorry I keep running into enemies. I swear it's not my intention. This one's a new one, so I actually have to show them off. Uh, if not, if he doesn't run away first, come on, coward. Okay, what do we got? We got, uh, hello. We got a hello. We have fly guys of some sort. They're just throwing little grenade bombs, uh, eventually, okay? Uh, they are just regular fly guys, okay. Uh, despite the propeller, you could jump on it, no problem. Don't worry about it. And I assume the... If you jump on the bomb, then, like, it, the number decreases, and then it will explode, so we don't want to do that. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. 
Red shell. Very basic enemy. And my cat is fiddling around in its litter box, so apologies if you hear that. Uh, this area's not entirely long, so I just kind of want to go on with it. Also, we probably cut out a bunch of stuff with the Toe Town. Though I'm probably going to regret it. Oh, god, do we need the baby cakes? I need the baby cakes! Uh, uh, let's go in here. Walk on over here. Float around. We all know how much I love these floating segments. Uh, can't do anything there, at least not yet. Uh, nothing there either. Nothing there. And nothing here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We have a higher ground. That's it, really. Great. Uh, what's over here? Three mixed flowers and some coins. Uh, let's see. We're pretty close to the top, I believe. I'm about to sneeze again. Oh, God. Cut away! I uh, just wanted to see what was over here if we uh, went to the top and then dug a little hole. Dig a little dream in your heart. I don't even know what that's a reference to, but whatever. I guess it just takes you to the top. Very lame. Uh, was there anything down below, though, that I might have missed? I really gotta stop caring about every little secret along the way, but there are many secrets in this game, many of which drive some peeps insane. Cut it away, if there are no secrets, they'll just meet back up here. There was one block that I missed and it had coins. And then there's this thing that had a bean. Okay, back up top. Somebody order a couple of burrows? Here we go. Pick them up and on our merry way. Oh, we're almost to the top, guys. I'm sure Gino's just so excited to see us again and see whoever the heck this guy is. Nah, no one's ever excited to see Luigi. Just go over here. Uh, anything on this side? We do have something on this side. We got ourselves two more mixed flowers. Dropping my new mixtape. Check it out, yo. Go over here and a save block. Hmm. In case you ever want to reset and just uh, experience the reunion, the reunion with Gino over and over and over again. Also, a buttload of stinking items. My God, like he's just giving us like welcoming gifts. Such a nice guy. Love him so stinking much. Uh, we go over here now. Oh, hello! I did not mean to come here yet. Okay. This is a jerkish stinking boss. Remember when I said I was stuck on the stinking swiggler for a million stinking years? After I finally beat that guy, I was stuck on this guy for a million stinking years. I could not defeat him to save my life. So here's what you need to do. You got these three shrooms holding on to the shrew bomb. Shrew bomb is invincible. You cannot destroy it. What you gotta do is get rid of two of these guys because then they will no longer, the one remaining will not be able to hold on to this, uh, sh the shrew bomb and it will just explode. If you get rid of the first two right here, this one is going to uh, be, th be thrown off balance and then he'll end up dropping it towards us. If you get rid of the two on the sides, then the one in the middle, he'll just drop it uh, right on the ground and then it'll explode and won't hurt anyone. But if you get rid of uh, the two in the back, then this one's gonna uh, flip backwards and then it'll roll back and hit the commander and then we actually get to fight him. But as a kid, I never got that, so I was always like a stickler for doing things in order, so I always attacked these two first, but I always wound up getting hurt in the process. I never understood what I was supposed to be doing. But that's what you need to do. You just need to hurt the two in the back. Do not hurt this guy. So just focus on this guy. Don't even use any of your bros items yet. Just save it for the big boy when he comes into town. It's a really weird way of wording it, but whatever. Just gonna go ahead and do that. So we got rid of one of them. Uh, he did a little wink showing you who he was gonna attack first. Uh, just keep on bouncing it back and forth. Okay. And just playing volleyball with a super death missile thingy. And they give him another shrew bomb. Because everything's gotta be shrew themed. Go and attack this one now. And attack this one. Again. And he rolls on back. And whips out the commander. When I finally got him onto the field for the first time, I was thinking I'm blown away because I was like, oh my god, I can actually fight him now. It was stinking infuriating. So, what are we going to do, huh? How's about a couple of copy flowers?
Oh, I did the X, but I just didn't press it quick enough. And 430 damage on the first stinking attack. That's stinking amazing. Okay, so he just does that. Okay. 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 Okay, very good. I don't know how many times I can say okay, but whatever. I'm gonna use the trampoline just to mix things up a bit. Okay, be, I was like thinking in the back of my head like it would be insane if I got rid of him in like just two stinking bros attacks Maybe we'll get rid of him in three stinking bros attacks. Red shell, here we go Okay, not quite but at least we get a cool little fight because of it things are still gonna be intense to the bitter end Maybe possibly I don't know uh, Okay, well, that's gonna make it a lot more intense as for sure uh, Do not go back. Thank you uh, let's go and use a cannonballer, because why not? I don't really want to use the mixed flower. Go and do that. It's my one of my favorite attacks, just because it's very cool looking. Boing, 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 boing. Uh, is he taken care of? No, not quite. Uh, I guess we'll use the mixed flower now. Hopefully it won't be too overpowered. Three hundred eight damage, and he's already sinking dead. One stinking cycle. Childhood me, kid night and beyond. That was for you. Dynamic badge A. I think he always drops that. This is it! This is the place! My sensors are picking up tremendous levels of Cobalt Star readings. Well, the game just came to a really sinking abrupt ending! I am the Star Sprite that lives within the Cobalt Star. I have tapped into the sacred power of the hill so that I might speak with you. I think you may have already figured this out, but I hold the power to defeat the Shroobs. However, Princess Shroob also knew this truth. She broke me while battling Princess Peach. Mario, Luigi, young babies, you are the last remaining hope to save this kingdom. But please, you must hurry. My pieces must all be brought together once more. If you collect two of the three shards that still remain, you'll be able to pierce the shrew barrier that guards Princess Peach's castle. And then when you collect the last shard, you'll become the heroes of this land. Now hurry, collect my remaining shards! My cat is very excited about this. I believe there is one shard sleeping within the star shrine up ahead. For now, this is all the aid I may offer you. We will speak again of that, I am sure. So, as we surmised, it was the foul Princess Shroob who shattered the Cobalt Star. Do we really need to come to that conclusion just here and now? It was sort of obvious. It was just sort of also assumed. Oh, whatever. We must hurry to gather the remaining shards. We must. By the way, why is baby Luigi crying? He seems to be afraid of the star sprite. Perhaps he felt something emanate from it that we did not? Is that possible? He's just jealous that he doesn't get to grow up and be part of one of the best games ever made in the future. But whatever. We have made it to the top of Star Hill and Gino is nowhere to be found unfortunately. He's not in this game, just sort of setting you up for sadness I suppose. But we have a lead us to where we could get another piece of the Cobalt Star, so I guess that's pretty good. Next time on Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, we are going into the Star Pathway, whatever they called it, and we're going to find ourselves another Cobalt Star Shard. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.